Picture this. It's Friday night, maybe it's been a long day at work, your school assignments are leaving you behind, the kids have been extra uptight lately, you had a difficult misunderstanding with a friend. In today's world, everything moves a hundred miles a minute. There's the ever looming sense of dread smoking up your mind. If you took even a single second to rest, you're left with the thought of falling so far behind that you'll never catch back up. If I take that time off of work, I won't be able to afford dinner, and eating sleep isn't good for me, you know? Can I even miss out on that one assignment so I can fix my sleep schedule that just goes on for like 3 hours a night? I mean, I gotta get some sort of rest to get ready, you know? Or maybe 3 hours a night is just fine? I just gotta make sure I don't pass out during the exam like that one time I pulled an all-nighter, right? If I cancel on my friend again, will they start to think I just don't enjoy their company anymore? What if my flakiness makes them never want to reach out to me ever again? Could I even, like, live with the loneliness that's growing in me if they cut me out of their life? If I take just one second to relax, is that it? Is it just all over? Just like that? Time. Time is a massive enemy in this day and age. Always trying to optimize the limits of the time given to you. 24 hours in a day. And no, we don't all have the same 24 hours a day as one another. Someone with a chef or the income to be able to afford to order delivery on a whim definitely has more time than someone like me who has to spend time cooking his own meals. That's 30 minutes to an hour on my end that someone with the extra expense can just pay to bypass. With that said, so many people are always trying to min-max every minuscule part of their life. Trust me, I was one of them. Minimizing the tedious bits and maximizing the dopamine overdosing bits using every last ounce of strength to squeeze that tiny milliliter of zest out of a hobby just so you can get the most out of it, or just out of life in general. Only to be disappointed why that tiny little droplet of juice didn't quench your overwhelming dehydration. We're not taught just to keep pace with everyone else, but to surpass them. I don't know about you, but to me, that sounds kind of toxic. Get ahead as if I'm trying to prove I'm better than them. Above, as if my success is evidence of my superiority. Where's the sense of community in a hyper-competitive, loneliness-fostering worldview like that? One where we don't separate one another based on a hierarchy, but commune together in our interconnectedness? Is the only person that matters the one who's on top? But how can someone lead if there's no one willing to follow, unless they've just got no other choice? And if I'm doing my job right, I've begun to instill a sense of unease in you. And for that, I gotta apologize. I'm sorry. Oftentimes, this sense of, there's no time to waste, I have to make it and I have to do it now, can pervade something as innocent as a hobby that you do for fun. I've played my share of video games in my 30, probably 31 by the time this video goes up, years of life. I've had fun, I've raged, I've even experienced deep apathy and everything in between the full spectrum of emotions that a human can have. Lately, I've been playing Tales of Arise, and honestly, it was mostly to fill in the time over this blazingly hot summer. The hand-painted anime aesthetic caught my full connoisseur eye, and the game felt alright to play. But as time went on, the game became a drag as bosses filled the screen with attacks and the plethora of its enemies became damage sponges. I lowered the difficulty to easy and, you know what, that hardly did jack. Combat still felt like dragging my bum against hardwood floor. So I did what I usually do in times of distress. Go on Google for validation, of course. After some time, I learned there were ways to kill the enemies quicker and the question of, am I wasting my time with this game? began to dwindle as I understood the mechanics of the game better. But you know, this video isn't about Tales of Arise and I want to respect your time and just get on with it. Something many games often fail at doing. There's a common mechanic in JRPGs and that mechanic is cooking. Where you can cook food and it'll give you a temporary advantage in the game. Keyword being temporary. Well this is a wonderful thing for gameplay purposes. It is awful for a person like me who wants to be able to stop and smell the roses and take everything I can in. Because if I do, I'm going to waste the items I use to cook ice cream. Mmm, this ice cream tastes so good! Like, who in the name of Zester Besser Vesperia makes ice cream by cooking it? How do you cook, like, something frozen that's crazy and eat it? Like I mentioned earlier, I adore the look of Arise, but thanks to the cooking mechanic, I felt the need to rush through the dungeons to minimize the use of my items and get the maximum usage out of them. 
Sadly, this causes me to minimize my ability to let the beauty of the game in, with no way to truly maximize letting in the handcrafted artistry truly sink in for me. In my 25 hours-ish with the game, I can remember small bits of beauty here and there, but nothing that really got me to stop and go, wow. And that's because the game just wouldn't let me. There was no time to stop and wonder at the beautiful world of Rena, as I gotta make sure I got the full effect of digesting this cooked ice cream for 10 minutes. Then I put in another game and... Astro's Playroom Astro's Playroom is filled to the brim with easter eggs for prior Sony games. You cannot go a single second without seeing a reference to a dead ga- You cannot go a single second without seeing a totally cherished game from Sony's history in here. It isn't just the references, a small chunk of them I know nothing about. Even so, it's not about that. It's about the feeling of wonder. That they took their sweet time and showed me why I should care about the little, small, handcrafted polygons of this world. It's not asking you to trek your way through into generic jungle 420, but their original GPU jungle. There's the novelty of this imagined world instead of an interpretation of a realistic one, and I don't mean to insult the artistry of realistic game worlds. It just gets tedious seeing the same green leaf on trees over and over again. Heck, there was even a time where everything was yellow like your toilet water after you replaced drinking water with a nicotine addiction. Or black and white like the depression creeping its way at the beginning of this video. I don't want an emulation of real life. I'd rather see things for myself with my own two eyes. Although, you know, I, I can't actually afford a trip to the jungle. Uh, help? I don't have money? Spare change? I want creativity, not mimicry. I'm tired of video games wanting to be an impersonation of life. I want them to be an inspiration for life. Astro's playroom is chock full of life, from the little details you can speed on by if you don't slow down, to the homages to the history of amazing video games. Like, this is my third time playing this game, and only now did I just learn you can press the d-pad in any of the four directions to make Astro dance? I only found this little moment when I saw these little bots DDRing their way into a good time and I wish I could join them. And well, once you look at that, his dance pad looks exactly like a game pad. So I press the button and... It is a miracle in this modern age that every little bit of life can be watered down to something trivial for a checklist. This game has me wanting to slow down and let every ounce of love poured into it wash over me. Just because you're an adult doesn't mean you have to lose your sense of wonder. Losing that sense of joy is usually optional, not mandatory. Serious talk for a second. Some people are in bad living situations and I don't feel comfortable making a bright and shiny analogy when there are actual people in dire situations they cannot escape from. Alright, back to silly old video much ado about a whole lot of nothing. Honestly, if you made it this far, I don't know why you're watching I'm just mumbling about random stuff. Complete nonsense, really. But if you're fortunate enough like me to not have your life in any actual danger, you can still be in awe at all the little moments of life. Games haven't gotten worse. They're just different. And different isn't bad. Just, you know, different. I love modern games. I love swinging through New York City in the new Spider-Man games. I love the narrative genius with the God of War games. And yes, there have been scummy practices over the years, but if you choose to play games that are fun and that appeal to you and your taste, well, we're kind of still living in a golden era of video games. It doesn't even have to be a modern game. Old games exist too, and I'm sure you haven't played each and every one of them. So why not pick up one of them for the very first time? There are quite literally just too many video games out today, and it's still growing. You'll never be able to play every game that would light up your imagination, and that's okay, because that means there's always more. So why not drop the games that make you miserable and pick up one that lets you have fun the way you want to, huh? You don't have to be miserable in your own hobby, you know? Alright, this script is growing way bigger than I had intended, but I feel there's a bit more to say. Let's get into the issue of burnout. Burnout is possible with anything you enjoy. Overexposure will get anyone to feel lethargic for the object of their affection. I love pizza, you love pizza. Now that we've gotten that fact of life out of the way, if we decided to eat pizza for every meal, we'd be burnt out on it. You're gonna start craving something else. 
Something as simple as an apple will start looking better than your kinkiest desires when you haven't had your teeth rip into a juicy one in a while. Or, you know, you can combine eating that ripe apple into your kink. Your secret's safe with me. So the solution is simple. Have more variety of food to eat so you never get tired of them. And by food, I mean hobbies. Sure, you can experiment with different genres so you're always exposed to new experiences, but it's still got the basic structure of being a video game and your body is still moving in ways where you're still hitting buttons on the controller or a keyboard. So why not treat it to something novel and new? The old adage carries quite a bit of weight to it. Absence really can make the heart grow fonder. So take some time away from video games and enjoy the multitude of other ways to enjoy your leisurely time. Since the end of my last long-term relationship, I've been spending a decent amount of time touching grass and I've explored several different hobbies that don't involve me looking into a screen to enjoy myself. I've become a lot more social with getting to know people, even being able to talk to strangers with no need for it to be anything more than a simple conversation, without the need of having it to grow anything beyond what it's supposed to be. Even going back and working on strengthening my existing relationships with other people, alongside the new ones, realizing incredible new things about people I've known for years but just never really paid much attention to until we both made the attempt to get closer to one another. Don't worry about your desire for video games going with the wind. As I spend my time away from them, the itch to hit buttons always comes back eventually. Not only that, when I make the time between different games, there's space for the last game to actually sink in. It's not just another checklist at this point, but something I actually want to do. It's not here all the time, but dang is it great when it is. I have a myriad of options for me that I genuinely want to do, and when I return, I can play the next game feeling refreshed and excited instead of just doing it like begrudgingly because I have to get through it and be over and done with it. And setting time to make videos like these is just the icing on the cake after playing a game that hits me. So dear viewer, if you've made it this far, let me congratulate you on sitting through my ramblings because it takes a lot of patience to do that. <laughs> Thank you, and please, no excuses on this. I would like to ask that you make some time to enjoy yourself too. Bye!